Have you ever found yourself playing a new game and, against all odds, you're doing surprisingly well? You're even doing so well that you end up asking yourself, why is this so easy? It's easy to get an ego boost over something like this happening once in a while, but eventually, more often than not, people end up at the same conclusion. And that is that games used to be harder back in the day. Now, is this actually the case, though? Were games really harder before the modern era? What even is the modern era? And, most importantly, are games getting easier? Over my time researching the subject, I believe I've come to a satisfying conclusion. Of course, I can't just give you the answer without a proper explanation. And you know, I actually need you to watch the video to help support me in doing these kinds of videos. So hey, thanks for the continued support. Ah yes, I believe we have all heard and felt this at some point in our collective gaming lives. Now, to put it simply, the answer to this question is both a yes and a no. Shocking, isn't it? Well, the reasoning is actually kinda interesting. To answer the question, we first need to talk about what a modern game really is. And it really depends on what age group you're talking about. Someone who grew up with the GameCube and PS2 is more likely to say that games from before that era are harder compared to what they were playing. The same goes for someone growing up today with the Switch and PS5. They are also more likely to feel the GameCube and PS2 era games as hard. But why is it that one demographic can feel like their games are easy and one can feel like they're hard? The answer is that it comes down to how games were designed during that era that the person got into gaming for real. So let's take an example. Someone who grew up playing the original Metroid on NES would have an easier time playing it today than a young person who, let's say, only played Dread. At the same time, that person who grew up with the original Metroid is more likely to feel like Dread is much harder, despite it being newer. Now, this is because newer games tend to be ever more complex. That in itself isn't the hard part, but rather that the person who grew up with the original never learned how to play games in the same way as someone today does. The same thing goes for the young person going back to play the original Metroid. It's simple in control with there being so little buttons to work with, yet challenging in game design. It's completely different to what the majority of games teach in today's environment. Most games today tend to start with some lengthy tutorial section with plenty of those annoying pop-ups telling you how to do even the most basic things such as walk. When that is how you learn how a game should be, it's not surprising that young people will find the old school game design choice of dropping a player into the game without any kind of tutorial kinda hard. So it really depends on the person. Newer games tend to be overwhelming at times, especially the controls can mess up some older minds. Now, here's a shameless plug, but I really recommend watching my video about video game controls to get a deeper understanding of why the controls matter so much. But do that after this video. The gist of it is that saying that one game is harder outright depends on the person and what they're accustomed to in terms of how games should play. There will always be those who say the DKC games are easy as pie, but find something like Minecraft hard, and then the same thing goes the other way around. So, it should be obvious, but what counts as a modern game also depends on the person. And with that out of the way, let's move on to the main question of the video. Are games really getting easier? Armed with the knowledge from earlier in the video, you now know that there's a lot of different ways to look at difficulty in games. How I like to do it, though, is to analyze a game by asking a few very specific kinds of questions. Those are as follows. What does the main challenge to the player in the game consist of? Something skill-based, problem-solving, memorization, or something else? Is the difficult aspect of the game actually just tedious more than anything else? Is the means of control difficult? If so, are they complex or is it the means of taking action in the game itself a hassle? I haven't thought of a name for my technique of analyzing difficulty in games, but why not call it something like the Sharpie method? And with that, let's look at two games using the Sharpie method. <laughs> 
Dark Souls is probably the single best fitting game for this kind of look into difficulty. You all know the image the whole franchise of the games has in today's age, so let's see how Dark Souls responds to my questions. What does the main challenge to the player in the game consist of? Well, one could say the main challenge in Dark Souls is to skillfully survive, kill all the bosses and enemies you know, and make your way to the end of the game. However, I disagree. While I haven't been able to finish a Souls game myself, I have seen many friends fully complete many of them, and by talking to them and having seen the struggles firsthand, all pretty much agree that the challenge comes down to memorization of the enemy patterns and attacks, and that the more interesting and difficult part of the games are building an optimal character with all the stats and classes to choose from. Now, on to the second question. Is the difficulty aspect of the game actually just tedious more than anything else? Stat building is definitely not tedious as it's not something that remains the same the whole game, but memorizing the patterns of the bosses and enemies certainly is. When looking at the broader player base of the Souls games, it's quite common that most bosses take players a crap ton of attempts to beat, and with there being multiple phases to many of the bosses, just getting a chance to try and memorize one pattern often means having to waste a lot of time redoing your earlier phases. But keep in mind that everyone is different in how fast they pick up on certain attacks and animation cues. As such, it's hard to say how many attempts it takes to make the experience truly tedious. Finally, is the means of control difficult? I wouldn't say so. In terms of movement, the Souls games can feel quite clunky at times, especially compared to other third-person games. But honestly, it really isn't an issue. The one thing to keep in mind is that every action in the game takes time to do, and as such, if your brain reacts in time to an obstacle but the game doesn't, it can feel quite aggravating and at times hard to make any progress. However, I think it's kinda obvious that the player messing up a timing due to forgetting the basic physics of the game isn't the game being difficult, just the player being bad. In terms of how complex the controls are, it depends on how well you remember what button does what. There aren't a lot of times when you need to press multiple buttons in succession to do special moves or such. Most of the time, one button has one purpose. So, with all of that said, is Dark Souls difficult? Well, kinda. It's one real difficulty comes from building the optimal character with the right stats and equipment to efficiently take care of the enemies in the game. This is because there's just so many possible ways to make a character in the game that it takes a great mind to be able to get it done. And yeah, I realize this was a very simple look at the Dark Souls games, but you can see how this method can be used to compare what the majority of difficulty in games is like from one generation to another. If you're still not sure what I mean, let's take a look at Super Metroid, an older, somewhat challenging game according to newcomers of the genre. What does the main challenge to the player in the game consist of? Exploration of the environment and being able to display a sense of direction. The most important thing to remember is that there's a very big difference between walking around and actually exploring. In the case of Super Metroid, it's a 2D game which immediately makes the exploration simpler and more straightforward since you can only really go left, right, down and up. Instead, the player has to pay attention to the world in a different way, since highly stylized 2D games can often feature a lot more details than 3D games can in a single screen. That can be everything from noticing hidden paths or upgrades by very slight graphical differences between different corners of the screen to understanding what rooms are where and how they connect. Even though the game features a map, it isn't more than a bunch of squares stitched together, so depending on the player, that can be a hassle. Personally speaking, the map works perfectly fine for a player like me that grew up with games similar to this one in difficulty design. Is the difficult aspect of the game actually just tedious more than anything else? No. Exploring the map and getting a sense of direction is not something that in itself is tedious, but what arguably is though is the amount of backtracking in Super Metroid. Although personally, it doesn't bother me much. 
Even so, I acknowledge that, technically speaking, going back and forth in hallways and other rooms just to get somewhere is tedious. Is the means of control difficult? No, not really. While you have a lot of abilities in the game, it comes down to the exact same thing as in Dark Souls, memorizing what button does what. Very rarely will you do something that requires complicated strings of input in Super Metroid. The most complex thing you do control-wise in the game is wall jumping. Otherwise, the movement itself is purely skill-based. That is very responsive, thus forcing the player to show that they've mastered the game's physics and understanding of how the game's logic operates. So, is Super Metroid difficult? Again, kinda what can be considered hard in the game is exploring the world, keeping an eye out for where to go and what to inspect, as well as keeping a mental note of where certain rooms are and where they connect to. Otherwise, it's not particularly difficult, as the game only really tests the player's understanding of the mechanics and physics to solve the problems. That is something that's on the player's side to get better at, not the game. So, what's the takeaway here? Are newer games easier or harder than older ones? Calm down. If we analyze games using the SharpEye method like this, we can notice that, in reality, games haven't really gotten easier or harder at all. They've just changed in what the challenges consist of. And that's that, right? <sighs> Things are never that simple. In a perfect world, the Sharp Eye method would make the case for what's a harder and an easier game totally valid. However, one thing I've yet to mention is that a lot of newer games have easier modes available for players, which didn't really exist in older titles. So taking that into account as well as checkpoints and such in more modern games, I guess you could say that the majority of modern games can technically be easier than older ones. But personally, I don't fully agree with that line of thinking, seeing as wasting less time redoing things such as full levels due to checkpoints doesn't make the game itself easier but less tedious. So the definitive answer, at least in my own findings, is no. Games haven't changed in difficulty level, but the types of challenges have, and what you personally find difficult in games is based more so upon how you learned to play games, which in itself is based upon how games generally were designed during that time period they were made in. So I'm not sure if anyone wants to hear this, but personally speaking, I find the first-person shooter games such as Call of Duty or Battlefield hard. I just never grasped how to naturally move and think like good players do. Plus, my aim is also always hot garbage. And at the same time, I find games such as Zelda or Pikmin much easier for myself seeing as I was introduced to gaming playing a lot of third-person and strategy games. Now, before we end this, I just need to stress that if a game is hard for you, don't give up on it. You will get better even if it's outside your comfort zone of gaming. Huge thanks for watching this video. I know the upload schedule has been a bit crazy as of late, but that's more so to do with a huge trip to Japan I did and moving as soon as I got back. Either way, I'll see you all next time. Bye bye